What's going on, my friends? Chris here. I want to bring you all an update today of Bitcoin. We're going to get into a few altcoins as well. What I want to do is take a look at Bitcoin here on the one hour time frame. That's what we're going to look at on a few other charts as well. And what I've been doing is trading on the one hour time frame. I think it's been presenting a lot of clarity for us here. And what I've been doing, guys, in the positions that I'm in, I've been allowing them to ride. And basically what I was doing here is trying to allow my positions to ride as long as possible and as long as we're riding this 50 moving average here. So this 50 moving average in red has been a really nice support almost all the way throughout this uptrend. So I'm paying attention to that. And for me, that's going to be my stop loss area. As of right now, I'm going to continue to let my positions ride as long as possible until I see a one hour candle close below this 50 and then I'm going to reevaluate everything. But what I like to do is give my positions a chance to run as far as possible because I don't play huge positions. I'm trying to manage my risk. And what I want to be able to do here is ride as long as possible. So right now for Bitcoin, we're still trading up above this 20 EMA and that's going to be in green. We're up above our 50 EMA and we're up above our 200. So whenever you're trading and you're going long, you want to see us in a nice uptrend, guys. We want to be up above this 200 moving average. That's really going to help you. You can see back in this range when we cross above many times, we'll have really nice moves to the upside. And when we're trading below here, we can really get pushed to the downside. So you really, when you're taking long positions, you want to be on the one hour time frame up above that 200 moving average. I think that'll really help you and up above this 50 moving average as well. When you're looking at positions, you know, potentially getting in when we cross up above those on heavy volume, that's something that you can look at. And what I also like to do here is take a look at the VPVR. So this shows we've had a lot of action right in this range that we're at right now where we're trying to hold support and that's going to be at about $47,849. If we're not able to hold this support, I would look for us to fall back into the range of about 45 Five to 44,600 and test this 200 moving average, which we've done plenty of times here. And that would still be healthy for the trend. We've really gapped away from this 50 moving average. We've had a lot of strength here and we've almost just been consolidating upwards. So if we do start, you know, pulling back a little bit, I think that would be healthy for us. I think we could cool down before we potentially try some of those higher levels like $52,000. But right now the trend is up. And when you're trading, you want to trade with that trend. Imagine yourself on a big inner tube or whatever. You want to go with the flow of the river. You don't want to try to fight that. And the fact we're still up above our 20 right now, up above our 50 and our 200, that's nice. I'm going to continue to leave my positions open and just let them ride. Like I said, until we start closing below this 50, then I'm going to reevaluate everything and see where we're at right now with the relative strength we're going to be at 60 so we still have more room to run if you know this is our consolidation we want to push higher definitely have room on the one hour time frame we do have a little bit of you know bearish divergence here price was going up and then our relative strength was going down so something we have to watch but it could just be a reset before we potentially push a little bit higher but we do have a little bit of sell pressure coming in as well up in this range here so Guys, that's my plan for Bitcoin right now. Really watch those areas. What we're going to take a look at next is Ethereum. You can also see these wicks coming in a little bit as well. So we're going to have to see if that's an area we can get through. If we turn on our pivots, it'd be about 48,240. And also, guys, if you get some from this, kind of showing you how I've been trading this, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let me know what you all are doing today. It's nice to be able to get a video. Guys, it's been so crazy around my house that <laughs> with the kids screaming and <laughs> everything else you know playing and running we have a small house that i had a video i was ready to get out yesterday and there's just too much in the background so i was like all right i'm just gonna hold off till tomorrow and then get it in for you guys when i have a little bit more quiet time so just bear with me try and do the best i can i'll get these videos out when i can so for ethereum right now still looking good on the one hour time frame here we are still holding this 20 right now trading up above it trading up above our 50 and our 200. so right now when we step back guys same deal when we crossed up above this 200 right here on the one hour time frame, we pushed up, we back tested it, and then we just ran from there. So really watch crossing above and below this 200. And like we said, take shorts. If you want a short, you know, when we were trading below this or we crossed down through it and then longs, you want to be trading up above it and just kind of go with this flow. So we're going to have to see if right now we're going to run into a little bit of resistance here and that's going to be at 3,485 is the area we need to get up through for able to hold this 20. EMA, that's going to be at about 3,411. The 50 is going to be at 3,347. So same deal here, guys, for Ethereum, you know, not financial advice. If you're in positions, I would just continue to let it ride here, see what we can do. 
And for me, it's going to be when we start breaking down and having that candle close below this 50 potentially. And what I like to look for as well, guys, on the one hour is one hour. What chart man Dan from the chart guys will say is one hour oversold back burners which is the relative strength getting 30 or below. And what you do, you buy in that if you believe that's going to be the daily higher low. And then that sets you up for the daily higher low for the longer time frame. And I've had a lot of success of buying ETH here, guys, on hourly oversold. I believe I caught this one back in here, and this was on the 20th once we hit that. And then you can see the run that we've had since then. So right now we have not had that yet. We have not gotten to those oversold territory. So that would be the next entry I would be looking at. If I was not in a position, I would wait to see if we could get that hourly oversold conditions is always a nice entry. Something you can look at there. So guys, really keep an eye on that relative strength. Now breaking to the downside, we are at 61 right now. So we are trading up above the 50, which is good, but a little bit of downside pressure coming in here on some heavier volume. So keep an eye on that next one. And if you're here for ETH, let me know, just put ETH down low. If we get into the next one here, this is going to be ADA. ADA, we are starting to break down through slightly, and this is going to be on the or the 20 EMA here. We're starting to close or trade below that. So we look to see if we could find support here on the 50, and that's going to be at $1.19. If we close below that, I would probably look right into this area, guys, here where we've had a lot of fight, and that's going to be at about 115 would be the area of support, and then obviously down around this 200. But right now, we're still in a nice uptrend here. You can see the 200. We are trading up above the 50, and if we bounce back out, Guys, just to give you an example, and this isn't to say I, I told you so or anything. This is so you can use this as a reference down the road because I love teaching people this stuff. So it was a few videos back, probably a couple weeks ago, we were looking at this falling wedge here. And whenever you see this big push to the downside here, but it didn't come on much volume, the bears lacked follow through here. And that was kind of a clue to me that we may break to the upside out of this wedge. And I was able to play this. So that's something, you know, it's been beneficial for me just really watching these wedge formations, but this is on the daily here. So if we can get over top of this point of control, which is about 134, we could really have a nice move because we, this is the main area of resistance that we need to get up through right now. Then we don't have a ton at the higher level. So when you're looking at these things rising, fall wedges they can really help you out so keep an eye on them so if we bounce back to the one hour time frame here let's take a look want to continue to stay in this nice uptrend so our 200 moving average that put us at about 110 so that's going to be an area that we definitely want to hold there and you can see these areas guys as we come back you know like 115 117 we want to hold those because we have this gap here you know if we start falling down through those levels we can go back to lower levels maybe test a dollar and all that and we just want to continue to see this river run to the upside so watch it on the one hour time frame going to be important for you then if we take a look and if you're here for ada just put ada down low if you want me to keep that in then we'll take a look at litecoin litecoin is breaking down through our 50 right now guys i want to see if we get a candle close down through this 50 if so we'd look down to about 125 see if we can hold that as support then be down to around 124 this 200 moving average we want to continue same deal like we've talked about trade up above that that's what's going to be most important for us just really watching that 200 moving average and us finding support off it right around you know this 122 to 125 area in terms of overhead resistance now we got to get over top of 132 about 132 to 133 is the area of concern that we're going to have to break up through and then if we go back down through here, guys, see if there's anything else really running. Soul is up about, let's see, over 5% right now. So for Soul, trying to hold this 20 EMA, lower area is going to be the 50, and that's going to be at 109. And then we take a look at this 200 moving average for support, and that's going to be at 101. Same deal, the river has been to the upside here. Typically, when we have had these retracements, we break down through the 50, kind of halfway between the 50 and the 200 there, and then we get moving again. So, you know, guys, if we had something like that, it could put us back around 106, somewhere right in that area. In terms of overhead resistance, we got to get above about 115. It's going to be the area we had some heavier selling pressure coming in in this range here. So definitely something to keep an eye on if all cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, all of them just pull back a little bit to some of these lower areas, calm everything down before we potentially move to the upside again. So just some things I'm looking at here, guys. If you get some from this, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. God bless you all. Take care.